Hey, so how you guys doing? This is Neil from PerfectSunLED.com, and I got a quick video for you guys here because I have got there's a lot of confusion about what exactly is hydroponic growing, so I want to clarify that. In this video, I'm gonna show you what hydroponic growing is, and then the pluses and the I guess negatives, the positives and negatives of doing hydroponic growing versus let's say soil, and what is the differences between soil and hydroponic, and that will really be clear when I just explain what hydroponic growing is. So a lot of people are confused and they think this is hydroponic growing, like pure water or let's say deep water culture where you're growing in a bucket like this. This is what they think that hydroponic growing is. But hydroponic growing, as by definition, I'll show you here, the definition of hydroponics is the process of growing plants in sand, gravel, or liquid with added nutrients but without soil. Soil is where it confuses people. They see cocoa and they think, oh, that's soil, but it's not. Soil is a living thing. Soil has micro microorganisms and so forth. Uh, soil is usually a mixture of, let's say, compost and worm castings and something like peat moss. That's a soil. Soil needs to dry out when you water it. You can't just continue watering soil. Uh, like you can cocoa because it will kill your plants. With cocoa you can water it three times a day. I know that because that's what I do. We water our plants three times a day and if you guys aren't familiar with my grows I got some really really big autoflowers. I still hold the world record for the largest autoflower ever grown which is two point like nine pounds uh, after it was all dry and stuff so that's pretty awesome. That's a huge one. The second runner-up was my uh, Northern Lights by Royal Queen Seeds, and that one was a 14.8 ounces uh, plant. And that doesn't sound as big, but that's still, I don't know anyone else that's grown a bigger one that actually recorded that online yet and showed that it's bigger than that. Uh, prior to that, it, the record was held by, I forget the guy's name right now, but it was a really big 13-ounce uh, uh, autoflower plant. Autoflowers typically don't get that big, so getting a 14-ounce autoflower is a big deal. And getting a 3-pound one is just astronomically probably never happen again for me or maybe anybody anyway so it's really important if you want to get big plants to do a system that works so my grow system works and I'll tell you what my grow system is in just a second and how it is indeed hydroponic growing so you notice here that sand and gravel uh, this would include anything like hydroponic or uh, hydroponic beads like the um, hydrotin that's that's the most common one used inside of net pots so inside of net pots like this you'll have the hydrotin in here um, one one real quick note when you're doing deep water culture like this you only want to keep the water, look at, see how the roots are down here already? You only want to keep the water up here until the roots grow down. Once the roots start growing down into the water, you don't want to raise the water up this high anymore. You only want to raise it up to about right here, you know, about, about halfway or so, because the roots will be in the water and that's all you want. You want some air gap between the net pot and the water, and that allows those roots to get tons of oxygen. Don't worry, they're not going to dry out because they're inside of a very humid environment that is inside the bucket. Anyway, so that's just a common mistake I notice people make when they're trying deep water culture and they wonder why it doesn't work so good. You want to make sure you have a lot of air bubbles in there um, in deep water culture, but that's why you want to leave that gap there too. It allows the, you know, allows the roots to have a lot of oxygen. Anyway, so that's that grow. Then you also have like NFT where it has the bucket and then it has some sort of um, top part. Sometimes people use a PVC pipe, different things, and then pump pumps the water up here and drains it down. That that's a system that works as well. And then you have my system, which is cocoa. But keep in mind, the definition is basically the definition of hydroponics is growing an inert medium. Inert meaning that it's not alive and it doesn't have any nutrient value in it itself. So soil has nutrient value in it. That is, you can take soil, put a plant in it, just water it with water, and it's going to have nutrients for that plant. Um, for a marijuana plant, a really good soil that if it's in, if it's in a bucket, it's probably only going to have enough nutrients to last for like, during veg and part of flower, you need to give it some sort of boost toward it in the flower, otherwise this is not going to come out very good. Anyway, so that's soil. Soil means that you have nutrients inside the soil. And that doesn't mean that you just add synthetic nutrients to like dirt and now you have soil. Dirt naturally outside, dirt naturally outside has nutrients in it and it has a lot of living organisms inside of it that build and work together. I, I talk about that in another video. I don't want to, I don't want to cumbers, I don't want anyway, I don't want to overload this video with information. So anyway, the benefits of hydroponic growing is that, one, it's really easy to do if, if you use my system. Now, there are some systems that are harder. Deep water culture is a harder system to learn, um, to get it down right and make sure the water and everything's working right. If you follow some simple rules, it's not too difficult, but it's a really pain in the butt. Um, it really takes a lot of extra time to, to do that. And honestly, my biggest plants have been done with my hydroponic system, which I teach in my book right here, which I'm looking at right now. This is my Grow Pot Cheaply book. You can check it out on my website, perfectsunnelady.com. I also have an entire free grow course on there as well, so 
video course for you to watch. But if you want the, the book form, it goes into some other details that don't go in the course. And also it's all right there at your fingertips. And the, the, anyway, the digital copy is like seven bucks. Uh, definitely check it out. I actually make more off the digital copy, believe it or not, even though the physical copy is like $29. I, I make less off that book than I do off the, um, the digital copy, which is like three bucks. But anyway, off the, off the physical copy, I think it's like $2 or something like that I make. It's pretty ridiculous. It's because it's a color book and Amazon charges a ridiculous amount to print it. Um, and then, you know, and ship and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so um, how I grow is right here. This is my drip system. Now, you don't have to do a drip system. You can actually water by hand with my system. The important thing of my system is just cocoa and perlite inside of a pot. That's it. That's my system. And then you water every day to run off. I go through all my different... Um, you know how I how I how much I water with how often I water all that's in my free grow course it's also in my in my grow book here, and that gives you the benefits is it, one it gives it gives you big growth so, so big big buds it also gives you faster growth, those are the two main benefits, and then the other benefit of my per, my my particular hydroponic system, is that it is easy to learn like you don't have to have a green thumb anyone can learn how to do this, whereas something like deep water culture or NFT system flood you know flood flood table type stuff that takes a little more time to learn and it takes some skill and it takes a little bit of a green thumb soil also takes a green thumb for sure soil is not easy to learn it, it takes some time to get really good at it but soil will never give you as fast of growth as hydroponics never and it'll never give you as big of buds well it will if you're like outdoors or something like that or you let the plant grow long enough but for like an autoflower it's really difficult with soil to get it to grow that fast and with autoflowers you're on a genetic timeline, right, or genetic uh, timer. That is, it's going to flower when it flowers genetically, and you have to get it as big as you can within that time limit. Um, and so that's why it's so important to grow with something like my system when you're growing autos. That's one of my secrets how I get my big auto flowers. But people see the cocoa, and here's, if you don't know what cocoa is. So cocoa growing. So cocoa looks like soil, you see. So here's pot soil, here's cocoa core. It looks similar, especially if you put, when you put perlite inside of it, it kind of looks really similar to this, but it's not, it's very different. It's just cocoa fibers, and those cocoa fibers are actually, um, they, they hold a lot of oxygen, even when they're fully saturated. The key with cocoa is it is a hydroponic medium, it's inert medium, you want to treat it like a hydroponic medium. That is, if you're growing a pure rock wool, you never let that dry out. You don't let rock wool dry out. For those that don't know what rock wool looks like, I'll show that now. So this is what I start my plants in. I'll start my plants in rock wool. Sometimes I'll do the 4x4 cubes, and that's really good. Four inches is all she needs. But I have another method of doing it. It's a little more complicated where I use a 2x2 two two cube or even a 2x2x4 even a two by two by tall. And I put that, and once the roots grow out, then I put that inside the cocoa. I have a technique where I water just the edges of it, like the 4-inch area of it, for like the first few days. So that way, it's just that 4 inches that's really getting nice root root bound and root strong and then I'll start watering the whole pot to to run off um, anyway it's it's easier if you just use a if you do a two by two inch rock wool cube just keep in mind once it has roots coming out put it inside the cocoa and then start watering to run off every day um, my, my other system is a little more complicated to learn but anyway so and or you can do my four inch is all she needs method which is using a four by four by four rock wool cube which is right here I think it's a, this is no, this is a six by six anyway it looks it looks like this it's very similar looking Anyway, that's rock wool. And so rock wool, if you grow in pure rock wool, you do not let it dry out. So unlike soil, when you grow in soil, you want to let it dry out a little bit. You know, let that top part of the soil dry out. You can put your, you know, your finger test. If you can put your finger up, up to the, you know, second knuckle and it's dry to the tip of your finger, then it's time to water again. If it's still moist, then don't water. That's like a typical rule for soil. Soil, you can't keep moist the entire time because it doesn't allow enough a breathing room for the roots and this is because soil retains a lot of moisture not so much oxygen whereas cocoa has a lot of um, micro not even just micro just a lot of tiny air pockets inside of it and so when you even when you keep it fully saturated it has a lot of oxygen in there same thing with rock wool so you can do you can do my system with pure rock wool or with cocoa both work really great I, I go back and forth now and again I'll do pure pure rock wool and stuff or sometimes I will even mix cocoa and rock wool together Anyway, awesome medium works great. Just make sure you water every day to run off. That is, if the rock wool starts drying out and you're watering once a day, then start watering twice a day. Uh, the second time, just, just enough to keep it moist. You don't have to get run off the second watering. Just enough to keep it moist so it doesn't dry out before you water again to run off. Make sure to water 
to run off at least once a day. So one of those waterings needs to you need to get runoff about you know 15% runoff. Just a little bit of runoff is all you need. Runoff means a little bit of water come out the bottom of the pot. As long as you have that, you're good. And don't let it sit in its own runoff and soak it back up. Vacuum that up and have a proper system to where it doesn't sit in its own runoff. Uh, easy way is to use crates or something, have it sit on top of that. Um, you can have it sit on top of two by fours, just as long as it's not sitting in its own runoff water. Anyway, so those are those are the huge benefits of it. So you get fast growth. Now the reason why that is is because since you're watering with water every single day, one you're replacing all that all that oxygen is being replaced every day. So fresh water has a lot of oxygen in it and you're constantly replacing it. Because you're watering to runoff every day, you're pushing all the old nutrients out and replacing with new nutrients. This is the same thing like with if the plant is inside of a bucket of water, is it constantly has all the nutrients it needs. So for example, if it's in soil and they're and the plant is depleting a lot of the nitrogen, but not really eating the other nutrients so much because it doesn't need those so much, or, or eats a lot of zinc for some reason, and there's only so much zinc available, and you're not replenishing that zinc all the time because you're only, you're only feeding soil here and there, um, it runs out of zinc and it can't grow as fast as it wants because it doesn't have everything always available to it. With any sort of hydroponic system, like my system for example, I'm putting those new nutrients, I'm watering with nutrients every single day. So it has all the fresh nutrients it needs. So if it's if it's a zinc hungry plant or if it's a, you know, calcium hungry plant or magnesium hungry plant, it has all the magnesium it needs every day because I'm constantly giving it new new nutrients. On top of that, I'm giving it more oxygen every single day. Every single time I water, that's fresh oxygen and also the cocoa itself produces a lot of oxygen to the root zone. So it's really really good. Where soil doesn't do that. Soil has to like almost dry out before you get a lot of oxygen to the roots. So a lot of oxygen, all the nutrients it needs, equals big bud growth and fast growth. And so that's why hydroponic growing is so good. Now, some of the negatives about hydroponic growing, I suppose, it's really kind of hard to find them. With my system, there really, there really isn't no negatives. It's really hard to find negatives of my system because it's so simple to learn. The negative of other of other types of hydroponic systems, like aeroponics, for example, is it's really fussy. The little, little fine little sprayers get clogged on you. Um, with something like an NFT system, it just takes longer time to learn. And it's the constant maintenance, having to clean that tank out all the time and stuff like that. It's really irritating because you have to keep it super clean since that's the water it's getting all the time. Anyway, it's just, I don't like doing it. It's... And honestly, I get just as big of plants and just as fast of growth with this form of deep water culture, or deep water, excuse me, this form of um, hydroponics, what I meant to say. See, even my brain wants to say deep water culture because I, people think pure water, but it's not. Um, anything where you're giving, you know, like I said, inert medium is, is hydroponic growing. You're feeding, the, you're feeding the nutrients directly to, to the roots of the plants and they're not getting it from the soil. Um, so I think another benefit, though, of soil... Um, for food at least, is I know that I'm getting all organic stuff to my food. If that's important to you for marijuana, you want to know that you're smoking organic stuff. That's harder to do with my system. It's harder to use true, pure, organic um, nutrients because most organic nutrients are not broken down. They're, they actually did make, I think they made a new a liquid nutrient, organic nutrient that is broke down naturally by enzymes. Uh, the problem is, is the molecules are so big in organic nutrients that the plants can't really uptake it, so they need microorganisms to break that down, which is in the soil. So those are probably the main benefits of soil, is that you get true organics and you know you're getting organic food. Um, the only way to really do that with my system would be to, I have, I have another way of doing it, like a, a hydroponic way of doing it, but it just doesn't, still doesn't give you quite as fast of growth as my, my synthetic version. Um, anyway, I talk about that on this YouTube channel if you want to look it up, the uh, Living Cocoa Hydroponics. Another way to do it, though, is, is if you can find that nutrient I'm talking about. I, I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's a – basically, it's a fish it's – it's a liquid fish, liquid seaweed nutrient that has all the nutrients in there, but it is broken down with enzymes, naturally broken down with enzymes so that it's more readily available to the plant so they can uptake it easier. And uh, also, you can use, like, maybe um, liquid – like, there's a brand by – it's called Age Old Kelp. I think it's, or no, it's called Age Old is the name of the brand, is a brand name. And it's called, um, I think it's Fish and Liquid Seaweed, something like that. It's like a 322, if I remember correctly. That stuff actually works pretty good. You can kind of just use it as your main nutrient and then with, along with CalMag. And that works pretty good. I grew one of my plants basically like that. Um, anyway, so I'm not going to get into that, but that's the main benefit of soil. You've got the organic growing. Whereas with 
Hydroponics, it's much, much easier to get fast, big growth if you just grow with some really quality, quality nutrient. Now, this is where I think an argument can be made. Let's say I grow a tomato plant with my hydroponic method, and I grow another tomato plant totally organic with soil. Which tomato is, is better for you to eat? Well, this is where a lot of people get into controversy. I guarantee you that if we were to test both tomatoes, I can show you that my hydroponic tomato has more of every nutrient available and in it for sure. Like I can guarantee that will be in there because you can use trace minerals, right? You have things like, you can use things like uh, C90 to make sure you have all the trace minerals in there when you're when you water with a little bit of that inside your nutrients. But the nutrient it has everything the plant needs, like truly everything the plant needs is all available in the nutrient. And so it's getting all the stuff it needs, which means it's producing all the vitamins and minerals that you want it to have. And I guarantee if I took a tomato that I grew that way and a tomato I grew organically and went and had them tested for how much nutrients is in there for the human body, my, the, my, my synthetic might actually have more nutrients in it. I guarantee it's not going to be lacking anything. And so then it just comes down to, well, is, is somehow watering with a nutrient that's synthetic giving you some sort of bad things in the plant that isn't good for your body? That's, really, that's, that, that's where the argument will come down to. Um, whereas if you're feeding it organic stuff, you know, but is there, is there dangerous stuff in organic? You know, is cow dung dangerous to just eat? Does it have any, anything in it that can actually harm the human body? Yeah, it does. Um, so will that get into the plant, you know, cause that's in the soil. And so that, I don't know. I think it's, I, there's no scientific evidence that if you grow hydroponically, that your food is going to have anything in it that is not good for your, your body. That is the food is going to still be food. You're not eating, you're not eating the synthetic nutrients, the plants eating the synthetic nutrients, but it's not really synthetic anyway. Yeah. It's, it's synthetic in that we strip it apart through a synthetic process, but the end result is, you know, nitrogen and there's different kinds of nitrogen um the, the end result is the same what the plant is uptaking whether organically or not the end result the molecule is identical it's you know it's whatever molecule it is i forget the nitrogen there's i think nit nitrogen um let me see hold on okay so these are different kinds of nitrogen and the, but the molecules are the same right so whatever the you know the molecules you give to your plants are the same and that's anyway that part so i don't know whether or not that's a benefit that's up to you to decide Personally, I think that the food is meat is good, but if I grow food, I do I do prefer to grow it organically. So I don't know, maybe I'm being a little bit of a hypocrite there. But anyway, so yeah, those are the positives and negatives of growing hydroponically, and that's what actual hydroponic growing is. So hopefully you learned something. If you did, do me a favor, smash that like button. Damn! Thank you everybody. Leave some comments if you have any questions, all the good stuff. Subscribe if you want to see more videos by me. I'll see you in the next one.